Hi folks and welcome to the Truck King YouTube channel. This 2022 Nissan Frontier is exciting because it is the only major redesign to arrive in the mid-size truck segment this year and that's got us wondering, well, is it actually better now? And that's what we're about to find out. So in this video, we're gonna hook up a 5,000 pound trailer, we're gonna fill up that bed with payload and we're gonna tell you if this Nissan Frontier is worth considering. It's time for the walk around now, but first I have to tell you that this video officially kicks off our search for the best truck of 2022. As the 22s roll into our test facility here at Ironwood, we're gonna do all of our normal testing from now until the end of the year, and then sometime in January, we will tell you our pick for the absolute best truck of 2022. And of course, when we get there, once we've tested them all, we'll revisit each test and we'll talk you through our main thoughts on each truck. Now let's focus here on the Frontier. So this is a brand new powertrain. That is a 3.8 liter V6. It makes 281 pound feet of torque and 310 horsepower sent through a nine speed automatic trans mission. Now the Frontier you're looking at right here is the Pro 4X with the luxury package so it's fully loaded. Now just generally of course every Frontier has been redesigned. I think this redesign absolutely nailed it. I really like the way this truck looks. Please let me know in the comments if you agree. Now let's talk about Pro 4X a little bit. It's the off-road version, so you are getting tow hooks down here in the front. You're getting skid plates, and this is a point I wanna make real quick. The actual plate that you can see right here, that's an aluminum skid plate, and it only comes on the Pro 4X, but it's actually aluminum over top of steel. So there's a steel plate up underneath there. Of course, the aluminum's probably gonna bend pretty easy, but uh, at least it's there to give an extra layer of protection. Although frankly, I mostly think it's there because you can actually see it from the front and it looks good. <laughs> so as we roll back, another big upgrade for Pro 4X, of course, all-terrain tires. That is a set of Hankook AT. Twos. Now, the other thing I want to mention, even though I told you the truck is all new, they didn't really change that much, especially when it comes to dimensions. When we're talking about rear seat space, front seat space, the cab size, this is all the exact same as it was before. And that's because they didn't even change the frame here. The frame under this Frontier is the same frame as the last generation truck. Now I can show you the bed, and there have been a couple advancements made back here. First of all, damped tailgate. That's pretty much expected these days in the industry. With the Pro 4X package, you also get a bunch of features back here like a standard spray and bed liner, under rail LED lights, those are handy. You also get those rails up here in the bed so you can move around your tie down cleats, and then one fixed cleat in every single corner. Oh yeah, plus you also get a plug back here to run your electronics. I want to tell you about towing and payload now, and this also ties into some of the differences between Canada and the United States. So max tow on the Frontier is 6,720 pounds in the US and 6,490 here in Canada. Well, you say, how is that possible? Well, here in Canada, we only get four-wheel drive trucks. They're not selling two-wheel drive Frontiers here. One other difference I want to tell you about, here in Canada, we're also getting a unique model. This doesn't happen that often. We're getting a King Cab Pro 4X. You cannot get that in the States. If you want Pro 4X south of the border, you got to get a crew cab. But here in Canada, I guess Canadians prefer the short cab with the off-road stuff. So we're getting you a unique model, which is always cool. Now let's talk payload. Um, when you look at the press release, they list maximum payload for a Pro 4X at a little over 1,400 pounds, but I like to check the door jam sticker. Here on this truck, you're talking about 1,030 pounds of payload. Now it's time for another episode of Does Steve Fit? And we're going to start this one with uh, do babies fit in the Nissan Frontier? So you can see I have my forward facing seat installed on that side. I do have to tell you guys it's a little bit tight back here so installing seats is a little tough and then it doesn't leave a lot of leg room for your toddlers but they can fit back here. 
Now there are only two latch positions in this truck, one behind the driver and one behind the passenger, but there are three top tethers on the back of this seat. So in the center, you could seat belt install a seat with the top tether on the back. And let me show you one thing I love. This seat, the back comes down, so accessing these tethers is so simple, especially compared to what a lot of other trucks expect you to do. Plus, the Frontier has storage under the seat bottom. I feel like a lot of trucks these days, you get one or the other, either the bottom up or the back down. The Frontier here offers both. And now, finally, I'll jam myself in here. Now, as I mentioned, it's a little bit tight back here, but I do have just enough headroom. I stand at about six foot two. So I'm a big dude, but I do fit headroom wise. I do have enough knee room as well. I guess my biggest issue is floor height. My, my knees are quite tall, uh, which is kind of uncomfortable. So yeah, this is not a back seat that's really comfortable for a full size adult. And actually it is still one of the smallest back seats in the segment. Time to load up the Frontier for the payload test. We're doing one 500 pound barrel and then dad and I in the truck and that'll take us up to a thousand pounds. Now we're doing our payload test. So that is one 500 pound barrel back there in the bed. Plus us up here, we're over a thousand pounds. So we're right at payload. And like with a lot of trucks that we test, uh, I think you're getting the same feeling, Dad. It really doesn't feel like very much back there at all. It's just enough to smooth out the rear suspension and actually made the truck ride nicer than it does empty. But you know, for my, uh, my butt over here is telling me that we could have more weight back there. What, what do it, you feel? It's a good conservative number that they've put on it. In other words, uh, if you're sticking to a thousand pounds, you're not gonna have any problems. And yeah, I feel that it'll do more. But you're right, it's got a nice smooth ride now. Yeah, it really does uh, smooth it out, make it comfy. So we've learned that carrying the weight is absolutely fine for this Frontier. But another thing we learned, and another reason why I like doing these payload tests, is we get to use the tie downs and the beds of all of these pickup trucks. And here on the Frontier, you get a rail system so you can actually move a cleat around to tie different things down. Now me personally, I prefer the hard points, the actual hard tie down points that are right into the wall of the bed, whether bolted or welded. I just always feel more secure with those. So the Frontier has those as well, and here's my point. With the rail system, it makes those hard point tie downs really hard to access. And with our uh, ratchet straps today, it took Dad and I a while to really get in there and figure out how to hook it up because it's kind of hard to get to those hooks. So you can do it, but it's worth noting. And you have to mention, it's because the rail system is optional. Yes. And I suspect that when they decided where to put it, the original engineer probably would have had a problem with it. However, they just went, well, there's just enough room. So they stuck it on there and there's this tiny little gap to get to the original in-wall tie down. Yeah. Okay, back in from our payload test drive. Time to measure the squat. Talking about 35 inches right now. Let's peel the barrel off and we'll see how much it lifts up. All right, truck has not moved, barrel is out of it. Let's see what we're talking about here. You know what? That's an even one inch. It's up to 36 inches. So that was one inch of squat with 500 pounds, which is basically par for the course. And you can see that now on the squat comparison chart. Okay, time to hook up the trailer to the Frontier so we can show you the camera system. Now you get this rear view and the top down view, 
which is cool. You also got a hitch line right there. And you can see there is a hard mounted camera button. If you press that, you get that side view, which is looking down the side of your truck towards the front wheel. You can get just the back view or you can get this split view. Now there is no zoom in trailer view here like there is on a lot of trucks. So this is kind of the best view for hitching up. And now finally, the last thing I have to say, I'm not sure how apparent this is through my camera, but the quality of this image is really poor Nissan compared to, I don't know, FCA comes to mind or Ford or even GM. The quality of this picture really is low. I wish they'd uh, spend a little bit more money on cameras. But still good enough that, boom, I can get her hooked up. And just so everyone sees it, we are using our Gen Y Flex hitch. This hitch actually has rubber bushings in there to smooth out the trailer. We like it because it's so adjustable and yeah, it does make towing a little smoother. Now we're gonna use this same hitch for all of our truck of the year testing to make sure it is consistent. But now you know this is the hitch we are using. Okay folks, now we're towing here in the Frontier. We've got 5,000 pounds on the back. We just merged onto the highway. fairly powerful. I mean, we do have it in tow mode. Um, the shifts from the nine speed are quick. That's what I was feeling. What'd you feel? It's quicker and more powerful than the last one. That's for sure. All right. Yeah, that's the totally training felt good too. Yeah. So we are, you know, coming close to the limit of this truck. And uh, now we're moving at highway speeds. And I'll say just from putting the trailer on, the truck had a pretty flat attitude. It didn't seem like the front was really lifting. Um, so do you feel any sway, anything pulling you around? No, not right now. Um, um, give, me a, give me a minute though. We're running at 100K, so 60 miles an hour. It's really weird because I was just saying to Steve, we were kind of complaining about this hydraulic steering the first time we drove this truck. However, for this particular exercise, it kind of works because it really just sits here just solid. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't go anywhere. It, it's it's just dead center. There's no, uh, there's no light feeling to it. So from that point of view, I think it actually works better when you're towing. And it has the same experience when you're empty too, just that it's much less susceptible to the road, the crown in the road, cracks, bumps, whatever. It just seems like it wants to stay planted and go dead straight. Now the trade-off is it is definitely the heaviest steering, I think, in a pickup truck today, period. Like, yeah, I, I don't yeah. remember feeling steering like this. And, and like you just said, it's funny, the first drive, it was like, oh, this is heavy and weird. And now that we've lived with it for almost a full week, it's fine, it's not really a big deal. And there are advantages to it as well, plus the on-center feel. You actually get feedback from that wheel just when you're sitting there on center. A lot of trucks today are guilty of having that really, you know, the dead zone when you're just right there in the middle. Yeah. Okay. Now on the downside, Dad, no trailer brake control, or Nissan did not bother to bring the integrated trailer brake controller in here. To be honest, they, they only boosted the tow ratings a marginal amount too, so it was very obvious from the beginning when this truck was revealed that towing wasn't exactly the priority. I don't think Nissan sees its target customer as a guy who's towing heavy all the time, and I, like I said, that's apparent based on the fact that they didn't boost those numbers very much and no integrated brake control. Speaking of that point, what's interesting, Steve will know this, we go on a lot of introductions, and I've done a ton of them over the last 25 years. Um, vehicle people, manufacturers, they are not uh, shy when it comes to talking about what they want you to know. They want to make sure that whatever it is they concentrated on when they develop the new product is something that you're going to write about or talk about, so they hammer it at you. And when we did Nissan, they never mentioned towing, not once. And in comparison, for instance, the new Tundra, where the guys went on about it less over and over and over, towing, 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 towing. Yeah. So, yeah, they spent time for that. Nissan really hasn't done it for this. And so, right off the bat, the integrated trailer guard controller, that's a miss, that, that I really miss. Um, number two, these mirrors. These things, basically with the flat trailer, they'll work. But if you're putting any kind of a travel trailer, a box trailer, 
uh, you're gonna need clip-ons. Thirdly, just hooking up today, the the receivers for the safety chains, you gotta get down on one knee. It's low, it's really big. You gotta get down on one knee and get underneath the truck. It's just yeah. not necessary for them to be that far there, but that's where they left them rather than bringing them further out. So they did not look at it really hard and say, yeah, you know what, let's fix these things or let's make it better for towing. So it'll still tow. Don't get me wrong. However, did they spend a lot of time on it? No. So we did our fuel economy loop with the trailer. Oof, that's sunny. We're going to be able to see it. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> we did 40.1 kilometers and we managed 16.1 liters per 100, which is not too great, I'd say, with that trailer on. And for the U.S. viewers, here it is in MPG. And here is what we managed on our empty fuel economy run, 11.1 .1 liters per hundred or 21 miles per gallon. All right, folks, get ready for zero to 60 with our 5,000 pound trailer. We're ready for the race, Dad, hit it. We'll Laid a little rubber. was a 15 and a half second zero to 100 that's pretty quick which feels pretty quick exactly now this is the most powerful midsizer you can buy so that makes some sense and now you can see how that stacks up on the leaderboard Well folks, we are at the end of this video. Now the verdict after towing and hauling with this Frontier is that Nissan did all of the necessary things here to make this truck competitive in today's mid-size market. Now I want you to watch out for a second video on the Frontier. That's going to be our truck of the year video where we kind of talk about where the Frontier fits in the marketplace. We'll give you more thoughts on the truck and then we're also going to collect your thoughts. So watch out for that video. I'll put a link right up here right now so you can go watch it. And uh, yeah, like I mentioned, that's it for this one. So please now go below. Let me know what you think of the new Frontier. As always, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, hit join to become a member of the channel and then come right back here to Truck King to see what we're testing next. See ya.